Something that we've been looking at over the last two months really is how to use routing within QGIS. Uh, we keep on getting asked how, what's the shortest path and we always have to go back to ArcGIS with Network Analyst and to try and bring everything up into the future where we're using QGIS, we thought we'd give PG routing a look at. So this is kind of like a benchmark area which I look at to make sure I've got my network right. It's Anis Hogan roundabout where you've got a lot of grade separated junctions and well roundabouts which should classed as one way streets. So there's route in terms, there's quite a lot going on there. So first of all we converted ITN into the postgres <coughs> and you can see raw ITN stuff isn't digitized in its direction of flow. You've got the motorway is if you had everything route in that they'd all go west and they go around the roundabout the wrong way. That's okay for you. Everything go west. Um, so the first job was plus you've got extra nodes there. Um, ITN is a two dimensional network. So even though there's a grade separated junction in it, a field in it, um, PG routing can't read this field. So first we have to do two things using FME. Um, reverse roads which are traveling in the wrong direction and convert it to a three dimensional network to take out those grade separated nodes. So after it's run through that process it looks like that. So you can see the road is traveling in the right direction and nodes on bridges are taken out. Um, this is now quite the basic network where we've got direction of flow added as well as one-way street restrictions. So this is where we are starting looking at PG routing on this network. Um, we come across, well, we're using 1.x version of it, which we've just discovered there's a version 2, which a lot of the errors which I'm about to show you shouldn't exist. So as a benchmark, I tested it um, well, from my house to Cardiff Airport, because I know that route quite well, um, using quickest path, not shortest path. Um, basically, to get a quickest path, you have to add a time element to it. So you have to make up some pseudo speed limits. Say every A road is 60 mile an hour, every motorway is 70, every B road is 40, just to get some figures so you can work out stuff. Um, there's quite a lot of error in this. The red line is having the time in seconds. There must be rounding issues. It must use an integer rather than a floating number because when I changed it to thousands of seconds to get a larger number, it gave me the blue root, which as you can see is completely different. Um, also with <coughs> Um, at where you've got like, small nodes like this, this actually, <coughs> it's going the wrong way down that road. It's supposed to be traveling west, which if it was traveling west would go the wrong way around that intersection. So there's, there's a bug in 1.1, which um, where you've got, they call them parallel nodes, where they both have the same start and end. Um, node reference. It takes the first one which it comes across, not the one which it should take. Um, and that's pretty much as far as we've got because, well, version 2 of PG Routing is out, but it doesn't have a Linux compiler with it yet. So we're waiting for our IT section to either produce that or use the open source community to produce it for us. So um, until that is fixed, we're kind of at a junction with PG routing where we don't want to invest too much more in it until we know it's going to be able to do what we want it to do. And that's pretty much as far as we've got. And this is just 
for drive-in routes. So it's the next step. Once two is working, is to introduce walking routes and cycling routes. And then you have a networkable route. And then you can split it into several views within your post just based on walking, cycling, and drive-in, which is all this one, one network. And that's where I see the future of routing within Swansea Inuit. That's it.